So, good evening everyone, and this is my first experience of a live stream in English. I actually decided to have this stream because I understood that so many people who know English pretty well, having really high levels of English, actually are scared to speak it in public, and many other languages as well, uh, are shy to have their stories, their reels, their uh, broadcasts, streams in English because they know that they will be criticized. They will be severely criticized after that because someone will definitely come and write something like, well, you used this word instead of this one. That was um, not the most appropriate grammar construction. This wasn't the tense you were supposed to use. And people are actually really scared to speak English in public. And, well, when it comes to other languages where the environment is more supporting, they feel very comfortable to do that. So, today I have this stream to actually speak English and to show that, well, we can do it, everyone can do it. And actually, I'm, I know that someone will come um, somewhere in the comments and write, well, you mispronounced this word, here a different construction would probably be better. And I'm absolutely, well, calm about that, I'm absolutely happy about that, because everyone makes mistakes, everyone can use a wrong word. I do it all the time when I speak Russian, which is my native language, and while I find it really important to actually be part of maybe a new, I don't know, tradition. I hope you can hear me well. And so today I will be talking about my experience in learning languages, which was sometimes a bit of a painful one, but actually, well, this is my story. So um, um, my mother started teaching me French since the day I was born, well, maybe a bit later, actually not since that exact day. And she had that idea in the 80s that if we start really early, if she speaks French with me, then I can be really, um, very, really fluent in French. So at the beginning, that all went well. I actually don't remember that, but I know that from my mother's stories. And she uh, would speak to me for sometimes hours in French, when I was a baby, was an, when I was in a stroller, when I was <laughs> awake, and that was kind of a positive experience. I remember definitely nothing about that or about the cases when she wanted to talk to me in the street or when there was something dangerous and she was thinking, should she address me in French or in Russian, which is better? But what I do remember is when I was two years old and later, we started having those regular classes. Like mum said that we are going to have a French class now. And that these were really long classes of French. I don't remember uh, if they were for 30 minutes, 40 minutes or one hour, but that was that classic situation where you have um, a certain amount of, um, I don't know, text to be read, poems to be learned, I had to memorize some really complicated words, uh, etc. And this was really painful for me. I was, uh, I started crying even before the lesson began. And I remember my mom constantly telling me that, well, <laughs> we could have finished the lesson already, <laughs> but you were crying for 30 minutes, actually. I was, uh, by the age of five, I was absolutely furious every time I had to uh, have these French classes. I didn't understand the reason my mother was talking to me in French. I didn't like the language. I didn't like those long poems. Uh, it was very hard for me to memorize those phrases, those constructions and all those things. And so it was, <laughs> it was actually extremely disappointing for me. And I really loved French, hated it. I, I, I just, I, every time we had this 
uh, this class in French. I was um, promising that I would go and live in an orphanage because, well, there people love their children more than actually um, my mother does. And so that all continued until I started school. When I started school, um, my parents actually chose an English school for me, but I can't say that English was really very good at that school, but that's a long story. But the whole thing was that actually um, the only person who knew English in our house was my father. But well, that was not technically in our house because my parents were actually at the point of getting a divorce. My father had already had a new family and even a child, although he was still married to my mum. And well, he came to us um, several times a week and he was having classes of English with me. That was, that was another pain in my life. That was another disaster. Because I do remember my father telling me, you have to remember this word. Why don't you remember? We just use this word. I've just, I've just said this word. I've just pronounced it. How, how is that you don't remember it? And I was so nervous. I was so disappointed. I was so scared of the whole process that the moment he pronounced this word, I wasn't already listening. I was like, Phew, all right, he pronounced this word. He said this word. Now I don't have to say anything. And so I ran to my mom, I addressed for help. She couldn't really help me because she uh, didn't know English, just a bit of Spanish and Italian and French, definitely. And so during this year, my second year of studies, I had this horrible experience with English. When my father came and we had those classes and I was in tears after each class we actually had, and well, that was a very difficult thing. Um, actually, I really loved the book. Uh, it was something absolutely fascinating for me and I loved English classes. Uh, when I was in my third year of studies, my father emigrated to the United States of America and he actually, well, we were not in contact since then uh, a lot. I met him only in uh, when I was 17, so basically in 10 years, 17 or 18, I don't remember exactly. He phoned me several times a year, like for my birthday, for the new year, and probably for the 1st of September. So I was absolutely alone with my English, and for me that was a very good situation, because for me, English was an escape. No one knew the language in my house. My mother didn't know a single word in English and I was alone, but it was something that only belonged to me. It was only mine. No one could control it. I was totally responsible for that. And it was something that belonged only to me. I was raised by my grandma who was a little bit, who had some glimpses of German, like Anna und Martha Baden. I had my mum, fluent in French, and my, it was my, I don't know, <laughs> my part of this life connected with, with the English language. But the interesting thing is that I was, um, mm, I was having all kinds of um, flu, flus, uh, colds, pneumonias, and I was constantly missing school. Like I remember that in the second year of my studies, third form, fifth and sixth forms, I was uh, absent from school for sometimes two, three months in a row, <laughs> and I was basically homeschooled, homeschooled because I was actually ill all the time. And this was a complicated situation because no one could help me with the English language and my, my mum didn't have money for an English teacher for me. So basically I was completely alone with my English and I was supposed to be, you know, self-educated. 
The tricky thing was that it, these were the 90s and if you happen to remember the 90s, you would probably remember that there, was no, there wasn't a single source you can, you can get something for your language. Uh, no internet, no YouTube, no films, no books, nothing at all. The only thing we actually had was, uh, were those programs on the Channel 4, um, English, French and German for kids. And since I was at home quite a lot and these programs uh, actually, they would repeat those pro programs quite a lot, uh, quite a lot, a lot of times, some of them I knew absolutely by heart. Like I still remember a song from a jo German program like Meine Puppe ist zwölf. Jahre alt, sie heißt Marie, ich geht zu Oma. <laughs> this is something I remember. I was eight at the time. I still remember that song. And Liebe Kinder <laughs> also. Uh, and the program uh, about English, about the English language was um, the Muzzy cartoon. The interesting thing is that it was um, a cartoon created by the BBC Broadcasting Corporation, but no one in Britain has ever heard about this Muzzy cartoon. This is probably the best cartoon that has ever been made for children learning a language. And I absolutely, and I still remember all those phrases. I've got plums, I've got peaches, I've got some grapes. Can I have some grapes, please, Daddy? Oh, here you are. And I was watching those videos time and again. And the other, the, another thing that I remember on the same channel, on this educational channel, were some programs uh, about England, about Britain, and I made recordings of those programs, uh, audio recordings on my dictaphone, and then I was tape scripting them. I was like, I was sitting and just writing every phrase I could hear there, and I couldn't really understand a lot of words there, but I was rewinding it, rewinding it, replaying it, replaying it, and I was really working hard on that. So imagine a nine-year-old girl sitting at home being unwell <laughs> and tapes, making tape scripts of uh, some British video. I do remember that there was a program called At Home in Britain and I really wanted to, to have this video program but we didn't have a video recorder and that program really was expensive and I just remember this box in a bookshop and I remember how how passionate I was about getting it and how I was dreaming about that but well I never got it and well uh, the thing is that I wanted to actually buy this program to find this program uh, these days but not a glimpse of it online not a glimpse of it anyway it, like I don't know disappeared into thin air but well um I still got a video recorder. I was, I suppose, 13 by the time. And by the time I also had experience of studying in France for two summers. And there I had some experience of speaking English to Europeans. In my group, there were kids from the British royal family. And actually there were lots of Europeans. There was a Greek girl who was speaking absolutely fantastic English. And I had that experience of communicating in English with the kids from different countries. I actually started speaking French that time. So when I came to France, it was it was the time when I started speaking French and I loved the, I can't say I really loved the country, but I loved the whole atmosphere and I loved the French language and I loved speaking it. And this, this, um, these months in France, in Ecole de Roche were really extremely important for me and I'm extremely grateful to my mum. For her, it was immensely, an immense challenge to actually organize all that. She was working uh, at that school at the time and that gave me a chance to study there actually. And so uh, this was extremely important for me because this gave me a chance to speak 
uh, to communicate, to be understood, and in some cases not to be not understood properly. So um, somewhere I was uh, uh, something like 13, I think, or 14, that I had my first video cassette recorder and four films in English my father sent me from the United States. They were in NTSC system, so they were black and white, actually. You couldn't watch them in color. And I remember that I, I, I failed to understand them. Not a single word uh, during the first time I was watching those films. But actually, in I, I watched them again and again and again and again. And like when I watched those films 40 or 50 times in a row, I was able to understand lots of words, lots of constructions, there are lots of patterns. And it was extremely important for my language, for my pronunciation, for actually my, um, my ability to understand English and to speak English. And that is why I know how important that is. And that is why we are making those workbooks based on films, based on cartoons. My way here was extremely difficult because you are totally unprepared. You are left alone with a complicated and abridged film and you are supposed to watch it in some way. But actually what we do now, we have very simple exercise, very clear and concise. And so that children who actually just start watching real films and real cartoons, they can actually have very simple tools in understanding small glimpses of videos and making that progress they try to understand more and more and more. So that is why we actually do it, because I know how important it was for me. But my, actually, my, my, my way, my path here was rather challenging and difficult. And not many kids would actually do that. Not many kids would watch a video 50 times in a row, you know, without understanding a single word. So that's why we are trying to find some more, you know, some, some, some better solutions. Uh, all right. Uh, when I was at school, um, um, somewhere in the fifth form, we had a second language and it was French. And I had this experience when no one in the class has ever studied French. And I was already not exactly fluent, but still I knew much more than the students than the pupils in my class. And so I, this experience was extremely interesting for me and extremely positive. Sometimes I, get, I have this question, parents ask, and if our child is, is actually more advanced than the class, if he knows English better than the whole, than the rest of the class, uh, it will be dull for him to be at the lessons. It was never dull for me. It was interesting. I was kind of an expert in French and it gave me confidence. It was interesting. I sometimes had to check other pupils' work and exercises. And I was writing a lot um, during those classes because I have uh, never written a single word with my mom. I was only reading, translating and learning some words. And I got those writing experience from my school classes. So that was I suppose, extremely important and, well, positive, a, a positive experience for me. I proceeded with the English language in basically the same way. I had more videos. I was watching those videos. I was actually working on my comprehension. I was still making some tape scripts and I was taking the Murphy grammar book with me when I went on holidays, imagine a 14 year old, 14 year old girl. Oh, there's someone here, Tony. Hello. Who are you looking for? Yeah. We have, we have someone, someone small here. Uh, can you please close the door, please? <laughs> All right. So, um, uh, I was taking Murphy grammar book to uh, all the vacations and I was doing those exercises uh, all the time. When I was at, when I was already close to um, those entering the university period, I met my first English private teacher. 
I actually had some very short experience of having some classes with my school teacher when I was uh, absent from school for three or four months. She actually helped me somehow <laughs> cover this program. But uh, before entering the university, I had private classes with a very good university teacher. And we were actually uh, studying the English language using uh, the Bonk book. And I was learning it nearly by heart. And I still suppose that it was an extremely important experience for me and I got really advanced in the English language because I got all this knowledge, all this language I hadn't, uh, I had never had a chance to get before. I entered the Moscow State University. When I finished school, I came to my mum with the, I'll show it to you. Some people will probably recognize the Popova Kazakova French book. And I said, mum, why don't we have French classes? And my mum was like, no, not anymore. My actually experience here is over. My, my I don't know, not, not, not exactly experience, but I'm done here. I'm done would probably be the correct phrase. And I said, Mom, please. And I still remember when we were somewhere on vacation with my mom and uh, I was asking her, Mom, can we, can we um, have some more exercises in French, please? So I became quite passionate about the French language. <laughs> when I already uh, started my classes at the Moscow State University. Uh, it was actually the Moscow State University philological faculty that gave me all that English that I've been working with for 20 years, for almost 20 years. We actually didn't get lots of, you know, daily vocabulary like to, I don't know, to roll up the sleeves or to tuck in or to, I don't know, to pull up the button something up or zip something up. But we had that really profound experience in the English language, lots of, you know, global vertical context and phonetics and very deep insight into grammar and writing a lot and speaking a lot and all that, all that experience, all that language, everything I had at the Moscow State University gave me a possibility to work with English for 20 years, for 20 years already, and to train the teachers and to train native speakers and to train even really highly qualified native speakers and to actually, um, you know, uh, to be to being able to teach students of different levels uh, with different goals with different aims in a you know very creative and funny way sometimes that all I had at the philological faculty of the Moscow State University which I'm extremely grateful to and I suppose that <laughs> well my teachers I, I I have said all that to all of my teachers not once but I suppose that it's still very important to speak about it more and more um, again and again, I'm sorry, not more and more, again and again, but maybe more and more too. At, when I was at the second year of my university studies, uh, at, the, uh, at the second year, yeah, we had our second language at university and it was Spanish. I loved Spanish, you know, from, 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 uh, from the time I was uh, 10 years old. I heard some glimpses of Spanish in some cartoons, in some films, in some series and in some episodes and I really wanted to speak Spanish and I really wanted to sound Spanish. Para mí era muy importante hablar el español, comprender el español. And so it was extremely, it was, you know, music to my ears. And so I started Spanish and it was a tricky experience for me because Spanish in many ways 
um, reminds you, resembles French language and sometimes you can just take a word from French and add a Spanish ending and you get a word in Spanish and so this is really a very interesting experience but sometimes you know these two don't match and you have a French word but there is no such word in Spanish. And I was quite fluent in Spanish. We had a very, you know, advanced, very, um, very brilliant, bright, smart in all the ways, uh, in all the senses group. And we were pretty advanced in Spanish. But the interesting thing is that um, after we graduated from the university, uh, I was out of practice and I basically forgot everything I knew in Spanish in a couple of years. It was extremely hard for me to speak, uh, to speak Spanish. And when we came to Spain, when we came to Madrid, I actually tried to speak a little bit in Spanish, but in, in I don't know, in a couple of sentences, I had to start speaking English because I wasn't understanding much and I wasn't able to really explain what I wanted and what I needed in Spanish. Uh, that, that, that all changed in some years because this year, before we went to Spain, I decided to at least try to remember some words and some uh, patterns and some phrases in Spanish and I did succeed and I did manage to explain no, what I needed, what I wanted in some very complicated situations like when our stroller was stolen from the hotel, actually not exactly stolen, but the man from the hotel wanted to take our stroller to the zoo and he was already at the point of doing it and uh, we were really lucky to be uh, there at the same time and notice that and actually have our stroller back. And I managed to explain all that to the hotel management and so on. So I managed to somehow, you know, revive some, uh, bring back to life some of my Spanish. But the situation with French in my life is totally different because I, well, I wasn't speaking French a lot only in some cases, only occasionally. I didn't need French much for my work, but Actually, I don't have language barrier in French. I don't have this language going into passive and I didn't have the same problem in French. And sometimes I think that it is because my mother was speaking quite a lot with me and because I got that, you know, experience in early education, in early language education, in early... Uh, you know, exposure to the French language. So it was extremely interesting for me to understand that. Another tricky thing is that I have never needed French or Spanish for my job, for any of the jobs I've had, for many, for, well, um, I actually was sure for many years, uh, well, Ah, oh, let me let me think. I, I had some idea, but I lost it. So I was pretty sure that all these, all these, all uh, all these um, languages were studied in vain, and I actually haven't had a chance to use them. But when I come to think about it now, I understand that. I really needed French in many cases and I really needed Spanish in many situations because I needed that in some situation of, you know, being competitive with other people in some competitions, in like choosing the person for the job. Uh, I found my first, I got my first job because of the French language. I uh, graduated from the Moscow State University and I was looking for a job uh, of an English teacher but the tricky thing was that I really needed I, f I needed to work flexi time because I was entering my postgraduate studies and I was writing my thesis 
and uh, there was no possibility, no chance for me to work like, you know, some from, you know, nine in the morning till six in the evening. I really needed flexible time, flexible hours. So when I was looking for a job, the only answer I received from all the schools in Moscow was, you are brilliant, we would be very happy to work with you, you can just start tomorrow, but no flexi time. You only can work, you know, fixed hours, no flexible time, we are really sorry, you can't, you know, combine teaching and your postgraduate studies. Once I was invited to a school, it was uh, owned by a French uh, businessman and he was also a teacher and he was um, actually interviewing me in French. We had a lovely conversation with him. We were discussing all the things connected with teaching, with languages and he was extremely, he was very, you know, it was extremely pleasant for me to chat with him. I can't even say that it was an interview, just we were chatting with him. And at a certain point he said, well, I like everything, you can begin today. And I was extremely happy and I said, fantastic, what, which course book shall I use? And he said, Panorama. And I said, I beg your pardon? And he said, Panorama, niveau 1, débutant, les débutants, nous commençons aujourd'hui. Uh, zero level? we begin today and I said I beg your pardon do you want me to teach French and he said yes and I said no I, I, I do not teach French I'm a teacher of English I know nothing about the history of France the history of French language I mix the articles sometimes and well and 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 I'm sorry <laughs> I I am I do not teach French and he was like well, I interviewed uh, something like six teachers that day and actually you sound much better than, than, any, uh, than e each of them and so I'm sorry but you will take the French group if you want to get this job and I started having um, classes in French, te I started teaching French at that school. For two weeks I was teaching French. Uh, my, I had a fantastic, lovely, small group, three people there. They already, all of them I think, have been living in France for already, uh, I don't know, maybe more than 20 years now. Uh, they, were, they all had plans to leave Russia and to go to France to live and study there. And we had an absolutely lovely group and lovely student students but it was extremely challenging for me and extremely difficult and I sometimes think oh god I don't remember which article I used with the word cloud nuage le nuage ou la nuage and so for two weeks I was begging to find a French teacher so that I could teach English and finally in I think two or three weeks they were able to find a teacher and everything was absolutely perfect and I started teaching English and in the, some very short period I um, started teaching, um, I started, te started training teachers and I was um, a director of studies in uh, some very short time, I was 21 at the time and I was really scared that someone would know that I'm just 21 and I was really scared that someone would understand that, <laughs> that I, uh, well, that I'm just in my 20s and I'm not an experienced, you know, uh, lady in her 30s or 40s, so that was the main concern I had at the time. Uh, so in the situation, I wasn't able to find a job with my, with only, with only English. And French gave me that competitive advantage. It's called a competitive advantage. And so I had some more cases where it was French that gave me competitive advantage in some projects. I was only working with English and I've never been working with Spanish or French but 
I also had some cases where Spanish gave me some competitive advantage as well. So that's a tricky thing because sometimes we think that, well, will I ever need this or that language? Well, you never know which language, what language, yes, can give you some advantage in a complicated situation. For me, it was definitely the case. Uh, I remember that just shortly after graduation, um, I was, uh, I got a job offer from UN, from UNESCO, I think, and it was a very interesting, very good job, but they also need me to be at my workplace from nine till six, and you can combine that with a postgraduate studies. So <laughs> that was that. Um, basically, I... Well, what else? What else? Maybe you have some questions I would be able to answer, or maybe not. Um, so if you have some questions, you can write them in the comments. So that's my story with my three languages. And I can say, the, the, another thing I want to say is that I had a very, you know, complicated story with my English language and it was really hard for me to learn it but I was really passionate about it and I was able to watch a film 50 times in a row to understand every single word there. I was able to make tape scripts. I had enough you know interest to take Murphy book um, on vacation with me and I know that there are not many children out there who can do the same because we are all so different. For instance, my husband, <laughs> well, I can't imagine him doing that. He was always, you know, uh, grasping knowledge really quickly and I can't remember, I can't imagine him watching those films again and again. And so probably that's why he's not fluent in English, he doesn't know the English language. And I, what I want to do, I want all the kids, all the children to have this chance to know English very well, um, despite their, you know, likes, dislikes, whether they're able to watch a film 50 times or not. But, well, in our times, this was the only path to mastering the English language. Another one was to go and live in Britain or in the United States in some American family or British family, but well, not, not many even could speak good English after that, after this experience. And so I want that every child has this chance. Uh, and so my children have never spent more than, I suppose, one hour doing something in English. Uh, having their regular classes and uh, they have never spent so much time um, having classes in the English language but they are already I think maybe not more fluent but <laughs> much more fluent than I was uh, when I was their age so this is basically my idea do we have questions here can anyone would anyone like to write something? No questions. Are you scared to write in English? You can write in Russian, by the way. I can translate it. Hey, am I the only one here? Uh, there will be a recording, I think, but you can never, you can never be sure about that with Instagram. In Muzzy, I only remember I'm fat. Yes, I'm fat. I'm fat and Kovix is clever and the king is strong and Bob is brave and Princess Sylvia is beautiful. All these words I remember very well. Okay, so if we... <laughs> okay, you're complimenting on my accent. It's super interesting. While I'm listening to a perfect English, my kids are watching Big Muzzy. <laughs> That's good. Uh, my kids adore Big Muzzy. Pure enjoyment listening to you. Thanks so much. Looking forward to start the course with my third child. It's fantastic, Anna. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Okay, so, well, <laughs> I was really happy to have this 
evening with you today and I suppose we can continue and have uh, more, you know, to have more reels, more stories, more videos uh, in English and I I'm, I'm really looking forward to your stories, your reels, your videos in the English language. I'm sure some people will come in the comments and say you misused present perfect or past simple or this was a wrong word here but I'm sure there will be those people there but I'm looking forward to your videos. Post them, uh, send me links to them and I will be the person who will come, who will come and say great job, well done, thanks a lot for that. So I'm waiting passionately for, for them. Uh, I just can't understand if you hated languages how you decided to become a teacher of uh, English. No, it wasn't the case. I only hated French and I only hated French when I was five, six and seven years old. Then English for me was an escape from all that. I loved English and I actually wouldn't mas I wouldn't have mastered, I wouldn't have by the way, yes, I wouldn't have mastered the English language without all those, you know, tape scripts and reading in English and watching again and again and all that. I loved the English language but I decided to be a teacher of English actually, I think, much later than I decided to enter the philological faculty. We, my mom decided that probably it can be a good place for me and I don't have other, you know, obvious gifts for medicine, for, for becoming, you know, a doctor or a scientist or, you know, a mathematician, so probably the philological faculty would be a good place for me. And it was extremely hard to enter the philological faculty at that time, extremely hard, probably one of the most difficult places to enter. And I got a lot of experience in teaching languages when I was studying in France because there I saw how best European teachers work and how you can actually manage a class with 15, 20, 25 people and how much energy, how much, you know, humor, how much inspiration you can bring into a classroom. And so when I started teaching, I was all the time remembering, I was all the time thinking about those classes and some of our university classes and I was getting my inspiration there but the only thing connected with hatred was about French language and it is a very important part of my life, a very important stage in my life because at that time I actually, I, I remember very well all my protest, all my negative feelings and that is why I know now how to teach kids and how parents can teach kids and to how to and how to overcome that protest and how to overcome the protest with your kids and with anyone else's kids because I remember it perfectly well why I hated this process and I know what is not to be done. So that's the idea. I actually phone my mom each time I speak French and every time I have an interview or a pitching in French or something of the kind I always phone and say mom thank you I'm so grateful to you this is so important for me this is such a tremendous tremendous thing you've done to me <laughs> and and my mom is always very happy about that and she actually sees that um, her granddaughter Natasha is already fluent in French and this is really important for my mother because one thing that she thought well she didn't succeed with uh, really turned out to be extremely positive and extremely important to me so that's that's the case that's the story yeah, this is there is a long story here more streams in English, please. I'll try to. We'll count 
how many comments we'll have about misusing tenses and words and your intonation turns out to be Slavic, you know. Well, there's, there are some traces of, you know, mispronouncing some words. You do not, you know, sound like a native BBC presenter, actually. We'll count them and see. Maybe everything is going to be fine, maybe not, but I'm looking forward. Thank you for your revelations. Now I don't understand the mission. Thanks a lot. So, um, looking forward to your videos, streams, stories and reels. Send me links. Thanks a lot. Take care and see you next time. We'll have more streams in English. Goodbye.